The 26th UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties, better known as COP26, began in the United Kingdom yesterday. Hosted in Glasgow, the summit will conclude on 12th November. Now, before we get into the details, let's clear something up. What exactly is a COP? These conferences are organized under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change or UNFCCC, an international treaty agreed to in 1992. It came into force in 1994. COP is a summit where the 197 signatories to the UNFCCC come together to decide how to implement the treaty. At present, the signatories include 196 countries and the European Union. Now, let's talk about the latest summit. Several leaders have described COP26 as a make-or-break deal for the planet, and its stated goals back up such a description. COP26 will seek to finalize the Paris Rulebook, the rules needed to implement the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate. As such, the delegates will try to find a solution regarding carbon markets, the aim being to create a robust system of carbon credits that supports the transition to net zero. Countries are also being asked to come forward with ambitious 2030 emission reduction targets that align with reaching net zero by the middle of the century. The crucial context here is that the Paris Agreement's central aim is to keep global temperature rise this century well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So, now that we know what COP26 is all about, the question that arises is, what is India's agenda at the summit? Though India has announced an ambitious target of adding 450 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity by 2030, the country has still yet not shown any intent to phase out coal. India is going with a bag full of demands to COP26. Indian government will pressurize the developed world for the $100 billion of climate financing per year which was committed in 2009 climate conference. If India were to meet 450 gigawatt of renewable energy target and also build a supporting infrastructure for it, it would need similar amount of funding from multilateral agencies. Indian government is also going to pitch for the reopening of the carbon credits market. Carbon credits market in the 2000s were a prominent method to invest into green energy by countries and noted investors in lieu of carbon reduction emission certificates until the market crashed. Indian government believes that this would be an immensely popular and useful method for investing into renewable energy in India. At the same time, India is also going to ask for a loss and damage fund. And on this particular demand, we have 24 other like-minded developing countries who are on our side to push for this demand to the developed world. The, these countries are going to ask the developed world to set up a fund which will give money to developing nations, especially island nations who face climate extremes from the historic pollutions of the developed world. Most of the discussions ahead of the summit have revolved around getting all countries to commit to a net zero target by a specific year. However, India has reportedly rejected calls to announce a net zero carbon emissions target. Keep in mind that India's per capita carbon emissions per year is 1.96 tons, while it is 8.4 tons for China, 18.6 tons for the US, and 7.16 tons for the European Union, against a world average of 6.64 tons. Also, a recent report by the Natural Resources Defence Council said that India was largely on track to meet and even exceed its Paris Agreement targets. Even so, India will face considerable pressure from various quarters at the summit. Which brings us to our next question. What are the challenges that India will face at COP26? pressure that will emanate from the Western countries for India to declare a net zero date. That is the year beyond which India's uh, emissions uh, would equal the how much it absorbs. So, uh, so that's going to really 
play uh, a major role in the conversations that India will face. Now, India itself would not be too keen on really uh, committing to a date uh, for the simple reason that India is frankly ahead of most other countries as, as of now. And also India, India on a per capita basis emits far less carbon than most other countries, developed or developing. So, so this, this pressure is going to really play very, very, uh, a very important role in India's conversation. So that's one. Uh, the second thing uh, that's going to happen is uh, India's commitments to reduce the use of coal or even enhance uh, investments in renewable and clean energies as well as on clean mobility. There, India has played a very, very, I must say, a leading role. But uh, there is that pressure is still going to continue. While it remains to be seen whether India will succeed in its objectives or not, the one clear thing is that its actions will have a considerable impact on the success of the summit. In the end, hopefully, all the countries concerned will remember what's truly important, that COP26 would probably be the last opportunity to contain global warming within agreed-upon limits. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.